How did it get from there to here? That's the question scientists are asking about a species of fish that somehow found its way from the Great Lakes to northern Alberta. On the surface, a lake and an island are two of the most highly contrasting natural environments. But looking at them a little closer quickly shows just how similar these two very different and very isolated ecosystems can be. Around 10,000 years ago, the whole area in, uh, in Alberta was covered with ice. And as it melted, we got these huge proglacial lakes that formed. They dried up as well as the ice sheet moved farther northeast. And all we're seeing is the remnant puddles, really, of these gigantic lakes. And isolated lakes can actually serve as islands. Uh, fish can get cut off from others of their own kind, and then they adapt to the local conditions in that lake and will e often evolve uh, new characteristics that are sometimes different from their parent population, and they could be on track to become new species. With the ciscos in northern Alberta, there is one species that we think was an original migrant from eastern Canada, uh, post-glacially, and that one, I think, is distinct, and that's a short-jaw cisco. The short-jaw cisco is a species of fish that used to be fairly common in the Great Lakes region, although it's now considered endangered. You can imagine the surprise of scientists when they heard that the short-jaw cisco had been found in a lake in northern Alberta. In 1968, there was a paper published on this short-jaw cisco in Barrow Lake in the Canadian Shield area. It, it seemed a little odd to me. I was very intrigued about why that species would only be in one lake. And what I really wanted to do is I wanted to take a look myself. I wanted to see, you know, is this thing really what they, they think it is in Barrow Lake, and is it anywhere else in that area? In 1996, Mark and his team traveled to Barrow Lake to see for themselves and find out if the claim was true if there really were short-jaw cisco in northern Alberta. We flew in there, we put in our nets, and we, we caught fish, and lo and behold, what we did find was that short-jaw cisco in Barrow Lake still seemed to be unique. It did surprise me. I thought we would find it, or something like it, elsewhere, and we didn't. Although he had a good explanation as to how these fish may have traveled to Barrow Lake, there were still many questions left unanswered. Mark's next steps? To gather more evidence to confirm the identity and evolutionary history of the short-jaw cisco in Barrow Lake. We have to be able to look at things under a microscope. We have to be able to look at internal characters, which of course we can't do on a live fish. So we need the museum specimens. They're also an incredibly important source of comparative material actually have the specimen in your hand, look at exactly what that other researcher looked at 100 years ago yourself, measure it, do all the same things that they did, is, is just invaluable. The main way to identify these ciscos is, is through a character called the gill rakers. There's a little bony projections on the inside of the gill arches. And the gill rakers and the short jaw cisco are much fewer than most of the other ciscos. There's always the possibility that it locally adapted, just like all the other ciscos in that, in that area. But what's more likely is there was an immigration 10,000 or so years ago of both short-jaw ciscos and the more common cisco into that area. And now, perhaps, for whatever reason, the short-jaw cisco has been outcompeted by the, by the more common cisco and is only hanging on in a few places. And Barrow Lake is, is one of them. <laughs> 